President Jason Wright, and you're listening to Ramblin' About Washington. Today, I'd like to welcome to the show my guy Mark Holmes, Cowboy Joe Boo, YouTube celebrity for the Dallas Cowboys, you know, doing his thing out here. I recently found out he was a Virginia native as well. Welcome to the show, Mark. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I'm still a little hungover from last night. We were doing a whole lot of shots and, you know, Tom Brady kept taking those shots down the field. And, you know, I'm just shot the hell up right now, man. But yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, I got a spot over here for you. Y you know, I got a spot right here. So when <laughs> you're not over there at that toxic waste dump FedEx field, oh, I got man. a space for you to come over here. You can get some Joe Boo wings and we can talk some smack uh, on game days. Hell yeah, I'm with it. I'm, that's a, there's a lot of that's a lot of Dallas stuff I, and propaganda I see over there. But you know what? When I'm not at the stadium, I am down to do it. We can get our we can get our Skip and Shannon on, man. I'm down to just go ahead and debate and talk some NFC East football. But yep. you guys kicked off the season last night versus Tampa in one of the best season opening games I've seen in quite some time. Did you agree? And what's your what's your synopsis on the performance last night? Um, I think a, a message might be sent around the NFL that the Dallas Cowboys may be a little bit better than thought about, uh, all this talk we had heard about, you know, Dak Prescott, you know, that first hit, he hasn't had preseason and, you know, uh, he's going to be rusty. I got to tell you, Dak threw all that shit to the side. If, if they are right, if Adam Schefter is right, that Dak's not a hundred percent, Lord help the NFL if he does get the hundred percent, because man, that was that was a, a game for the ages. Uh, that was an NFL record-breaking amount of passing yards for a season opener. Uh, it was just unbelievable. Unfortunately, my Cowboys fell short, but I'm gonna look at it as <laughs> actually I'm gonna actually look at it as it might have been the perfect way to start the season for him, because you know how us Cowboy fans are. If we had pulled out the victory there, Super you, Bowl. <laughs> that's the expectation. You got the target on your back, right? Yeah, for sure. You lose it and get just blown out like everybody thought, then of course that's demoralizing. But you as a player look at this and say, damn, we went toe to toe with these guys. We got screwed in the end by the officials. It it makes you hungrier to try and succeed. And and the Cowboys. You look at the schedule, the next eight games. Now, last year doesn't mean the same results for this year. Of course. The next eight games are against teams that all had losing records last year. Cowboys could go on a roll. They could. They certainly could. You know, the schedule is a little light on you all side, you know. But we all, we play similar teams. But, I mean, y'all got Herbert next week. Y'all got to go up to L.A. But speaking of Herbert, that's who we open the season up against. And we're going to get to our game in a second because there's a few things we got to touch on from this game. You know, right? L.A. is is a home game for the Cowboys, right? Oh, oh for sure. It's going to be full of Dallas Cowboys. The, the Chargers, <laughs> look, the Chargers couldn't fill up a soccer stadium. You think? I mean, seriously. You know how many Cowboy fans there are. That one place will be rocking with Dallas Cowboy fans. Oh, for sure. I expect um, it to be. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I mean, we, we don't need to focus in on the Cowboys right now. We actually need to focus in on what you guys are going to do this week. <laughs> what we're going to do this weekend. What we're going to do this weekend is – I don't think it's going to be the prettiest of games, but we're going to get the dub. I got us with a 21-17 victory uh -huh. over the Chargers. I think Herbert's stats are going to look better than a 21-17 loss. Like, he's going to have yeah. some yards and a couple touchdowns, but I think we're going to turn him over a couple times. And I think our offense is surprisingly going to look better than people expect it to be. I, I, I'm fine for a one-year rental of Ryan Fitzpatrick because of what we have around him. I know you're giving me that face. I know. I know. <laughs> I'll take him for 17 games, man. I, the team is bought in like they're 10 toes down with the guy. Unless he gets hurt. I don't see knock on wood. I don't see him being pulled because the team believes in this guy and he's a significant step up from what we got from Alex Smith and Dwayne Haskins last year. What are your thoughts on our game Sunday versus the Chargers? I'm just wondering what flavor Kool-Aid you like. 
<laughs> I like them all, man. Just put enough sugar in it. Because <laughs> you definitely drinking the Kool Aid on hell, Ryan yeah, Patrick, man. Um, I think that's gonna be your Achilles heel. Is gonna be Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, I, I actually got to look at it from the standpoint of you're playing at home. You've got the Chargers having to come across the west from the west coast. That's gonna be a, actually a ten o'clock kickoff for them what their bodies used to and the advantage should be to you guys um but the thing i try and tell people is don't get too excited or too upset by what you see in september facts because you really don't know what teams are like until october um you know for all we know that that might be the pinnacle for tampa bay and Tampa Bay may just go on a slide. It might be that Tampa Bay is just really not that good, and the Cowboys were just okay to hang with them. Oh, yeah, uh, that, that can always be the case because fool's gold and pretenders come out early in September, uh, always. You remember, Tampa Bay last year's season opener got their ass handed to them Hell yeah. uh, by New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And midseason, they were you know like 7-5 and five and then went on a tear. So don't get too excited or too worked up but, or don't believe in all this stuff. I've seen the Cardinals start out 4-0 and and then proceed not to win another game before. Yep. And what happens is, is you don't really know what to expect. You know, what kind of offense, what kind of changes, the different personnel, how they're going to fit in and so forth. So I, I hate to say it, but I think Washington does get the victory. Um, ah, my guy. <laughs> I, I, I say I hate to say that. I think that they do. <laughs> Will I root for that to happen? Oh, hell no. Oh, we know. <laughs> but I actually have a kind of a question for you on this one. Now, now okay. see, uh, I have a Discord channel that uh, my man Roz and Stu are taking care of, and we have five fantasy football teams, uh, leagues in there. And um, I am the unconventional one. I am like, a, you know, a, a fantasy football virgin and so forth. And basically what I said, I got my man Stu basically doing all my picks and running it for me. I said, I want Dak. Every time, first round, I want Dak Prescott, okay? Because I don't mm -hmm. want to miss him on the second go-round. They're like, but you don't draft the quarterback the first round. I said, look. Yeah, you don't do that. <laughs> and last night, you know, he had some great fantasy football numbers. Um, and I think it's going to be some great football numbers. But don't you actually have Dak Prescott, too? Yeah, I do have Dak Prescott as my fantasy quarterback, correct. <laughs> Here was my thing with fantasy football, as I told Stu. I said, Stu. I don't want no giant stank. I don't want no Eagle stank. And I damn sure don't want no Washington stank on my team. <laughs> it's just something wrong about that. It, do, it, it does feel dirty. I, 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 you, you were like, oh, man, I hate the Cowboys. God damn, Dak, you doing it? <laughs> I just can't do that, man. How do you do that? It feels dirty, but at the end of the day, if I'm going to play fantasy, we're like in my league, we have a heavy ass championship belt with engravings on it, but we're playing for fifteen hundred dollars. So okay. there's a there's a good little pot and I play in a couple money leagues. And when we put money on it, like okay. I can't be thinking with my heart. I got to think with my head and I expect Dallas's offense to be humming. So. I proudly have Dak and Cooper in my fantasy lineup, and it oh, looks you got, great. Oh, you got both of them. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh. oh, my man. So you're definitely going to be making some money on those two. Um, but how do you feel about your team going into it? you, you feel confident on this one? I feel like it's a it's a toss up matchup because I feel like the teams are on similar trajectories. They have the quarterback position solved. We don't, but the team we both coming off seven and nine season. They happen to be in the goats division over there with Mahomes, so it didn't yep. have a chance. But we won our division at seven and nine. Two different stories, but they have a rookie coach. I think our experience coaching wise is going to be the difference. And I think the best unit that will take the field on Sunday is our defense. They have things to prove. I can admit, at times last year, our defense was overrated. And we took advantage of bad quarterback situations, and teams got what they wanted with us on the ground. But I think we're going to solve those issues. And I think this year, this defense is going to step up to the elite ability that national – pundits are starting to feel that we can become and i got us in a 21 17 victory to open the season what kind of score you think well we know ryan fitzpatrick they're gonna be throwing the football around and trying to spread the field um but you know fitzpatrick gets streaky and he will have those turnovers um man your defense geez hubert is pretty good 
I'm actually going to go ahead and say 24. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I think you're going to win, but I ain't, I'm not going to say you're going to win. I'm actually <laughs> going to go ahead and say 24, 21 mm. chargers. Mm. Even though I think you're gonna win, I, 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 I just see I can't get dirty like that, man. I don't know how you can do that shit. I can't get. I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> you uh, know, sometimes you just gotta. Sometimes you gotta cheat a little bit, man. Sometimes you just gotta get a little. You gotta step on the dark side a little bit, especially when there's money involved. But you know, you know, in your heart, we're gonna win the game on Sunday, though. <laughs> do I? I think so. Um, after seeing the Cowboys' offense last night. Did that scare you guys any? It didn't scare me because I know what the hell the vibes are. Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I hate y'all. I hate Dallas. I hate the franchise. Fuck y'all. But (laughs) I love your quarterback. He's great. I was concerned that he was going to be injured and he was going to come out looking shaky because I don't want to hear y'all excuses when we win this division again. I will say... His mobility, he looks like he has some catching up to do with that. Obviously, coming off surgery, he's getting used to his new ankle and all that good stuff. He he definitely looks like he gets ran down by defensive linemen easier than we're used to seeing Dak do. But as a passer, I mean, it's first nature for him. Like, he looked phenomenal last night. 400 yards in your first game back versus Super Bowl champs who have a good defense. TDs. One interception that, that uh, you know, at first I was looking, I was like, damn, he threw that in some traffic. But then when you looked at the replays. It was CD's fault. It, it, that shit was threat. The knee, you were like, damn, how did he make that throw? He alligator armed the shit oh out of that when he God. wanted no parts of that safety. But, but, <laughs> now, now, here's the thing, though. Now, um, I'm not going to kill CD because I think one of the things that happened last year, you know, people last year, Zeke Elliott has lost a step and this, that, and the other. But if you remember, Zeke Elliott, uh, July 15th, you know, you saw the video of him talking about having COVID and he's like, oh, I'm fine and everything else. But if you listen to that, you could you could hear him literally grasping for breath because he <laughs> and, and I think that that COVID ended up being something that slowed him down in getting ready for the season because it was still two weeks later before he started working out, which was really beginning of training camp. Mm-hmm. C.D. Lamb just got off the COVID list. And, you know, on hard knocks, he admitted that, you know, he couldn't didn't have the taste and the smell and all, and although he had that big plate. He had that big mm-hmm. plate, and maybe that shit <laughs> slowed his ass down. Oh, yeah. But you don't know if he actually had some, you know, hangover from having COVID and stuff like that because that didn't seem like a C.D. Lamb uh, typical game to have that many drops and stuff in there. Um, but, you know, they were hitting out there. Oh, they were. And I see as soon as their cornerback – left the game you guys were targeting their boy every single play like I like that Kellen Mond I'm a Kellen Mond uh, Kellen Moore uh, as soon as he saw that cornerback come in the game y'all yeah. went at him like six straight plays in a row <laughs> like that's how you take advantage of a mismatch and I mean you guys have weapons for days um, for those who do say Zeke is washed and Zeke's not part of the plan anymore what do you say to that you know what the, he did exactly what you needed him to do because he sacrificed his ass for Dak Prescott. And you can see the dynamic between those two guys. It's one of those things that, you know, I'm not getting the ball tonight because, you know, the game plan is we're going to be passing it. And you can see that that was working for the most part. If CD doesn't have those drops or, you know, um, if our kicker actually kicked the field goals, okay, for him to miss the extra point in that first, I don't blame him on the second field goal in there. It's a different game. If we end up getting the push off at the end of the game, it's a different game. So, you know, you're not going to be perfect every game. But Zeke Elliott, he was there blocking lights out. And if you, you know, most people don't really watch. Oh, he was in there. I saw him mixing it up. I mean, you saw some blitzes that he literally hit a guy and the guy went backwards. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to still see Zeke Elliott feasting on some games. See, the Cowboys, everybody says you didn't really run the ball. But see, what the Cowboys did was they used the short passes and the screen as their running game to get people the ball in space as opposed to trying to bludgeon everybody up the middle, knowing that Tyler Baddish, who Tyler Baddish actually had a bad game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. You would think that Connor, well, (laughs) you would think that Connor McGovern, you know, having to step in for Zach Martin would have been the weakest link, but um, actually Tyler Baddish was terrible. He was frying uh, (laughs) seven pressures, five hurries and two quarterback hits. 
Yeah, and that was that was from your center. And if you notice, you know, a lot of times Dak Prescott, it was just kind of like you just saw an arm coming out of a crowd throwing mm-hmm. the football because they were able to get that push. Now, don't get me wrong. That front they have with Namak and Sue, but Sue didn't really have that great a game. It was Vita Vey that was Vita able Vey, to really. Oh, my God. He, he was, was dominating. <laughs> yeah, it's like that That was a guy that I wanted for the Cowboys, but he got drafted before we got a chance. And this is where I always have disagreements with people. I always say your biggest bang for the buck is the defensive line. Vita Vey was literally requiring to get double teams. Vita Bay was hurting the quarterback. Vita Bay is making that secondary better because the quarterback doesn't have time. Absolutely. Vita Bay is keeping the guards from being able to get the linebackers and the linebackers to make that play. If we had a guy like Vita Bay last night up in the middle, shit. That's what we missed. But our biggest problem, though, was Anthony Brown last night. Mm-hmm. Dude, got, dude got abused, man. Hey, I know if that's y'all biggest problem, y'all going to have some nights when y'all when them when that burgundy and gold comes through. But uh, we, we're not talking about us right now. We're not talking but, about but us. Let's right be now. clear. <laughs> you don't have Tom Brady, okay? Of course. You don't have Tom Brady and Gronk <laughs> and Anthony, uh, Antonio Brown and all the Correct. And, okay. That we talking night and day there, dog. We oh yeah, talk- oh, oh for sure, for sure, for sure. But that defense that we have though? No, 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 no. Hold on. You do realize that Ryan Fitzpatrick is usually only good for the first half of the season. And we play you the second half. Oh, yeah. But by that time, you know, the offense should be having some momentum. We'll probably have Curtis Samuel back then because I don't know if you heard, but we just put him on IR today. Oh, no, so, I did not. Yeah, well, Curtis Samuel's on the IR. So that means that y'all get a y'all, y'all get a nice – Y- y'all going to get a nice dose of rookie wide receiver Diami Brown. And pr- trust me, y'all are going to know who this guy is soon. I stashed him on my fantasy team just waiting for this because I already think even with Curtis Samuel, mm-hmm. he was going to end up being our wide receiver too because he might be the most talented receiver on the team. And I love me some Terry McLaurin. Terry oh. McLaurin is going to be the most technical receiver yeah. on the team. But Diami Brown, this dude's different. But – yeah, man. How do you feel about the rest of the NFC East games this week? We got Denver at New York and Atlanta at Philly. Or Philly at Atlanta. Philly at Atlanta. Um, I, I actually think the Atlanta Falcons, I know Atlanta is basically rebuilding, but I think uh, the Eagles are just terrible. You know, uh, as I much, do too. <laughs> as much as they talk about, you know, Dak needed preseason, I think that Hurts definitely needed more preseason. In fact, I, I just look at Miami, I put in this category as I do, Philadelphia, it's like you've done everything you can to destroy your relationships with your quarterback. Yep. The fact that you ended up naming Hurts, your starting quarterback, what, just a week ago? Mm-hmm. You know, of course, you had all the rumors about, you know, wanting to get Deshaun Watson, Watson and then you got the whole Flacco situation. It's kind of like, yeah, you're a starting quarterback, you know, but we really don't believe in you. We're trying to find anybody that will replace you. And it's kind of like you, you screw up his whole – ego and it's kind of the same thing with tampa bay with uh with tua you know you got the rumors of course of deshaun watson he's not a team captain it's like how is your starting quarterback not a team captain <laughs> yeah that's crazy you know that's and it's kind of like not a good look you know, this is where you want to say we believe in you even if you don't believe in him we want you to think you do we want you to feel good about it and i just think the eagles are going to be one of the worst teams in the nfl this year i just really do i agree they are a team that always <laughs> seems like they keep trying to get receivers but they just can't seem to get the right ones. You know, they, they ended up getting, uh, uh, you know, missing on DJ Metcalf, the very next pick. They ended up missing out on Justin Jefferson. <laughs> you, know, and of course, uh, you know, oh, Deontay Smith, he's the guy. Okay. All right. We'll see. We'll see if he is or, or not. I like Devontae. I like Devontae. Well, but see, that... you know, it's, it's one of those things that sometimes you, you, it, your team just ends up being that one that kills wide receivers. Hell yeah. <laughs> in the same way Washington kind of kills quarterbacks. Yeah, we, we we do that. We turn them out and we keep them pushing. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're a number one draft pick. It doesn't matter if you've been a, a stable veteran. It's just like it's something about FedEx Field and the Washington football teams that just seems like it ends quarterbacks' careers. It's I, I don't know what it is. You know, it, mm-hmm. this, this may be the last team for Ryan Fitzpatrick. It might so, be. It also could be the last team for him because he may actually succeed here, oh. you know? He could, he could get sent out on a swan yeah. song. <laughs> what flavor Kool-Aid you want, bro? bro. <laughs> I'm drinking a Kool-Aid until I'm told otherwise right now. I feel good. Things are moving 
Things are moving in the right direction here right now. I really like what's going on. I got the Giants beating the Broncos, and I got the Eagles getting washed because the Eagles going to win like four games this year. Like when I did my game-by-game -game predictions of our season, I almost didn't want to talk about the Eagles because I expect us to sweep them. If we don't, that's an issue because I think they're going to be really bad and they're going to be drafting a quarterback next year. Oh, definitely. And that's where, if you're really an Eagle fan, you want them to be really bad this year. You want Carson Wentz to have a great season, get that number one pick. You want to be bad and get all those picks and just start rebuilding the whole damn thing. The Giants versus Denver. I think this is actually going to be uh, the Denver Broncos, I think, are going to win that game. You think so? I think Teddy. Teddy. Uh, uh, Teddy, but that defense, okay? Yeah, yeah I, you know, good. I've got, you know, Rashid, the stinking New York Giant fan who, you know, he's literally the definition of a hater because I said, you know, he's always about, oh, Daniel Jones, Danny Dime, and this, that, and the other. I said, you know what? I said, would you trade Daniel Jones for Dak Prescott straight up? He said, no. Oh, no, he's, cra he's crazy. I said, wait, 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 wait. Later on during this live stream, he was talking about Teddy Bridgewater. Man, he's looking good, man. He said, I'd trade Daniel Jones for Teddy Bridgewater. I said, wait a minute. Oh, my God, what? Wait, wait. <laughs> I said, you just hate Dak then, right? Because there is no way in the world. Yeah, Dak Prescott, he just gets all his yards of garbage time. He's just a garbage score. I was like, you know, oh, yeah, your yeah, Giants yeah. kind of are always getting their ass whipped. How come Daniel Jones don't have a whole lot of yards of garbage time, man? But Daniel Jones, this is kind of crazy, has had 27 starts and has 29 fumbles. That's a that, that's it's a crazy. lot of fumbles. That's crazy. And uh, I want to say twenty two interceptions. So he turns over the football quite a bit. And I honestly, you know, as much as people keep talking, oh, he's a first round pick. I, I don't think Daniel Jones is that good of a quarterback at all. And he's got Jason Garrett as an offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, that offense is going to be bad. They have no offensive line. Their offensive line is terrible. You're going to see Denver feast on them, and you're going to see Daniel Jones turn over that football. Hey, I hope so. I hope that's the case. I really do hope that's the case. But, like, <clears throat> I'll take the Giants in that game, but I don't know. All I know is we play them next Thursday because we have two games in five days, and we better beat these fuckers because Daniel Jones has never lost to us. He's 4-0. And, and we're, like, the only wins he's got in his career almost. <laughs> like, he's lost versus every other team in the NFL he's played. Except for Washington. <laughs> it's all right. We're going to get his ass. We can just briefly talk about Hard Knocks. What did you think of you guys' season on Hard Knocks and how it compares to when the new Washington Blanks are on there next year and we're the hottest thing smoking in the NFL? <laughs> You can have smoking. What you smoking over there, man? Come on. <laughs> the hottest thing smoking? Hey, oh, is that year. because they're on fire and burning the place down? <laughs> um, Hard Knocks, interestingly enough, there were no major storylines in there. It was actually pretty tame in comparison to what you normally would get with Hard Knocks. You would figure that something would have been, you know, earth shattering or some kind of, you know, so it was actually kind of vanilla. It was. For the most part. In fact, it was kind of crazy because everybody that they kind of featured of, you know, the players that are the hopefuls, you figured that half of them would be cut, you know, so you break the hearts and, you know, get the tearjerkers. And then the other two would make, they end up keeping all of those guys, even Ben DiNucci. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, Damn yeah, you. <laughs> you know, the, the Dukes, yeah, you know, that's my school. Um, I don't think it was anything that, that really would have preclude the Cowboys from being good. I didn't see people really trying to ham it up more than, I guess you could say, uh, uh, Bones Fossil talking about his gonads. <laughs> I mean, other than that, it was kind of like, yeah, it was kind of myth. Um, and I don't think it'll hurt the Dallas Cowboys season. Uh, you know, I'm glad I saw it because that was really the only place we saw Dak Prescott working out. Um, it was amazing to me that you really did not see Jalen Smith whatsoever, almost in hard knocks. I know, uh, you right? saw him in a few scenes here and there in the first ones. By the last one, I didn't. I, I literally watched it a second time to say, I, I've got to see if I can even see Jalen Smith. But that may actually be a psychological game that actually helps Jalen Smith because – he actually played a lot last. He started last night, and, and at one point, he actually had three tackles in a row with no swipes. He didn't do any swipes. You didn't hear anything. You didn't see him dancing around. He actually played a decent game last night. And I will say, for my defense, they gave up a lot of yards to the GOAT. 
There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But they are a totally different defense than what they were. They did a lot of things different than we would have done in the past. We were always a bend, don't break type defense with Rod Marnelli. They kept coming after him. And they're going to get better as the season goes on because they're going to be learning the season and the nuances. You know, Micah Parsons got beat on a pass play. You know, he got sucked into it and was late on the coverage. You know, he's a rookie. But you can see the ability that he has. Demarcus Lawrence played outside linebacker sometimes in coverage. Well, you know, you saw him having to cover, of course, um, Gronk. Uh, sometimes he was coming in from a two-point stance. Sometimes it's a three-point stance. So they're going to do a lot of mismatches. They're going to do a lot of fakes and things. And as the season goes on, because quite frankly, the way the NFL is now, the games are actually more like practice and getting you set up because you don't hit anymore. You don't do anything live. You don't have anything at full speed in training camp and practice anymore. It's really mm -hmm. learning in the games. And when we get better, when we get Navel Gallimore back and stuff, as uh, Quentin Bohan, who actually played quite a bit last night, that big behemoth starts getting better and understanding about staying low, and you're not playing against Tom Brady, that defense is going to be capable. they got four takeaways, and that's the key in the NFL is taking the football away. Oh, yeah. I don't care how <clears throat> accidental it happens. Four turnovers versus the Super Bowl champs is impressive. So as much as we can say Dallas defense is not good, that's not a bad start. That's not a bad start. And y'all had every opportunity to win that game. Your yeah. kicker sucks. Like, I don't know what the hell was going on with him. He, was, he came in the last week and a half of training camp coming off back surgery. So he didn't get any reps in preseason back surgery. You don't know how bad it may have been. That may have been, you know, we had brought in another kicker and maybe we should have kept him for a little longer, but yeah, you, you can't miss extra points and you can't miss chip shot field goals. Oh, yeah, I'm, We're going through similar things with our kicker. Hopefully he got all of that shit out of his system in the preseason, but you got anything special coming up for your channel, man. You can plug anything you got before you go. Well, you know, definitely if you are a Cowboy fan, definitely come on over the channel and hang out and stuff. But the thing that's kind of interesting is I think I have as many fans of the Eagles and the Giants and Washington that come in as I do Cowboy fans, because it's not really about necessarily, you know, just talking trash and hating on each other. We actually try and have real discussions about football and stuff. You know, like I said, like you. I hate the Washington football team. I'm never going to root for the Washington football team, but I can respect what they're doing and understand it's a rivalry and actually be, you know, talk with my head as opposed to my heart about them and stuff. But we have real discussions about football. And on Sundays, um, what we're going to be doing is we start out live streaming at one o'clock. Uh, we've got direct TV. So we're going to be following all the games, talking about fantasy football and who's having a great game and stuff, watching the Washington game, the Eagles, the Giants and so forth. And it's kind of like a party out here. Oh, yeah, that's lit, man. That's a great time. And also, before you go, you're from the Virginia area. So you're in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, but you ended up being a Dallas fan. You want to tell the people who don't know, because I'm pretty sure most people already know, everybody in the world subscribes to your YouTube channel. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so it was hard for me growing up, okay? I'm old, okay? I was born in 1965. To put that in context, schools were still segregated in Virginia. Um, a black person and a white person could not legally marry each other. The reason why the state of Virginia is known for lovers is because of the love case versus Virginia, which actually opened that up. My father, of course, you know, liking football, couldn't support the Washington football team, which was the last team to integrate. OK, um, the NFL started integrating in 1949. Here it was the 60s still. Preston Marshall would not have a black player on his team. So my dad said, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to be a cowboy fan. Me as a little kid sitting on the couch, hanging with my dad on Sundays, he's watching football and saying, go Cowboys. I don't know what football is. I don't know what the Cowboys is, but I know the man that I looked up to, he was for it. And so I was going to be for it. And that started my passion for the Dallas Cowboys. And it was difficult because when I went to high school, that's back in the heyday of the Washington football team when they were winning Super Bowls with Joe <laughs> Gibbs, nice. you know, with, with three different quarterbacks. And I actually went to school with the defensive coordinator 
Richie Pettibone. Pettibone. We played him and his son. We played on the same football team at Madison High School. Joe Gibbs' son, J.D. Gibbs, of course, was Crosstown Rivals. It was Redskins, excuse me, Washington football team all around us. I mean, they were the Redskins. I had to stick to my guns. <laughs> Cowboy fan, which was difficult <laughs> being you were knee-deep in Washington territory. It's kind of changed a bit now with uh, – you know, basically the internet, the world's smaller. It's easy to follow other teams, of course, now. And you do have a lot of Cowboy fans that are in the D.C. Uh, metro area and so forth, as well as everywhere. We're like cockroaches. Y'all are. Y'all cockroaches. are. <laughs> Y'all just find a way to just disperse yourself. I call you guys NFL Mickey Mouse. You guys are like Disney, Apple. Like, y'all are like the big brand. Like, you can hate you fuckers all you want to. You have to accept that y'all are the biggest brand in the sport, even if yeah. it's not even if it's not shown on the field <laughs> or at or equates to any relative success in current day football it's all good man <laughs> on that one well you know i can't wait to uh play you guys again and uh hopefully everything will be okay with covid because i will be tailgating there we were going to have a big ass party um last year was the first time in the last five years that we didn't have a tailgate and every year it just gets bigger and bigger and i plan on coming to your house and having a party Hey, I'm in the red zone lot all year. When you do, just let me know, and we can combine the tailgates, man. I appreciate you for coming on with me today, Mark. All right, man. Best of luck to you guys this weekend against the Chargers. Hey, man. Appreciate that. I'm going to definitely come down to your studio and bring some burgundy and gold so we can, you know what I'm saying, we can make it look better in that area. But that's going to conclude today's episode of Rambling About Washington. Y'all know the channel, Rambling with Rio Robinson. Subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Sub my guy, Mark Holmes, even though you probably already have him sub. Until next time, hail to the nameless football team. Deuces. How about them, Cal?